Aqua friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole and today we are going to do a sunset landscape. This is a really pretty reference photo. Uh, it's either from Pixabay or Unsplash and I will tag that in the description below. So starting wet on wet with my sky. I am going to wet this really good because I want to give us enough time to get in all those different colors that I'm seeing that we need to put in for this sunset. So I'm using a one and a half inch, uh, this is the Princeton Elite brush. It's got a really nice snap to it. I could really massage the water into the paper really well with this brush. I'll leave the link for this brush in the description below as well. So I am wetting the paper right up until the that mid foreground here, okay? So now that that's nice and wet, I'm gonna go with my lightest colors first. And I have some very, very faint blue up in this corner here. And I'm just going to start putting that in. Now there's some clouds here, darker clouds. And I want to put that in while everything is wet so that they're nice and soft. Then it goes quite dark, almost to a purpley color. So picking up some purple, putting that foundation color in there as well. Now I'm going to switch brushes and I'm going to pick up some orange. This is Quinacrid and Sienna. Now it goes from this orangey color to a more yellowy color in the center where the sun is. So I'm going to switch to my ISO yellow, which is a very nice warm yellow. And I'm actually going to drag that across because I want that really warmness to the sunset. Now I'd like that to kind of bleed into the other color a little bit. We are going to put some darker purples in there. Going back to my orange, picking up a teeny bit of uh, pink to get more of a peachy color because we have some peachy colors kind of shining through here. Now we have to go very dark for that cloud. I have um, Perusian Blue. This is Oprah Pink and putting in those darker purples. So because we wet our paper a lot, I have the time to get in the colors that I need to. So these little clouds here, I see how it's very, very nice and soft. I want more pigment, less water. Now, some of the clouds over here are lit up with a bit of the scarlety colors. So I'm coming in with another calligraphy brush, a smaller one this time. These are really nice and cheap, guys, and they work fantastic. They're natural fibers and the way that your bristles can separate and it's just real pretty the effects that you could get with these brushes so basically with with natural brushes you just have no snap at all like i could go like this and it just bends right over it's going to go on very gentle very soft So I'm adding in those colors underneath here. Just want to get them sun-kissed. So I'm tapping that in underneath the dark clouds because the sun is shining up and lighting the bottom of those clouds on the top. 
and gives it that like sun-kissed appearance. And a nice fluffy brush that's clean is perfect as it's drying to just spread out those colors and make them a little more softer. I'm not too worried about drying up here as long as I dry along this line so I don't get a bloom. I'm going to use the exact same colors that we used in the sky for this mid-ground of mountains in the background here. So I'm just going to wet, wet it first. Right underneath the sun, it's a very warm area. I'm going to use my ISO Yellow Deep and I'm going to start here. And as we get away from the sun, I will go more into the purples. And then we can start bringing in a little bit more pink on the sides here. And then into the purples. going to just kind of fade out the bottom here. Use a little too much water. It's okay because I don't find this mid-ground, I wanted it to have a little bit more sparkle, a little uh, darker in appearance, and I'm going to go over those colors again, especially here because my I went over my mark here with the sky colors. You can fix mistakes or you can tweak things that you don't like. going to go right over that and get that nice and wet. And I want it to be more vibrant. I love vibrancy. I'm going to take that really nice punch of yellow I have here. Flood this area. Oh yeah, that's gorgeous. I'm going to go right over all the way to the end. I like that effect better. So don't be afraid to try new things. And make mistakes because the only way you're going to learn is by making mistakes. In fact, I used to teach knitting and my students were so scared of dropping stitches that if they dropped a stitch, they wouldn't really know how to correct it and they would start the whole project over again, which is insane. So as soon as my students learn the basic knit one, purl one, <laughs> um, I would take their project and I would on purpose drop a whole bunch of stitches in various different areas and then tell them to pick those back up and teach them how to, how to pick them up so that they would not be afraid to fix a project when, because things happen. I remember when my niece, she was only like a two years old and she picked up my knitting that I forgot on my mom's table and it was actually lace, so very complicated stitches and she was having like having it all unravel and I was like, oh no. <laughs> Now I'm going to let it dry completely. So I got these from Zem brushes and I bought some script liner brushes that are very, very petite. So they're like size zero, double zero, triple zero. I'm not sure, but look at how darn cute they are, guys. They're so small. <laughs> so, and any new brushes are going to be covered in um, a starchy material that keeps their shape. So you just want to rinse them out really good before you use them on your project. So if I could get it out of here. Okay. So this is a 2-0. And look at how tiny that is. Okay, this is a half a size. What is this? This is one, just a zero. I have ones already, but I never had a zero. So I like that size. So yeah, nice fine tip brushes. And... All those stocks that are in the foreground, I'm going to try those and see how it goes. But right now we're going to let this dry. I need a very muted green and bringing in some of the same colors that we use to, to unify the painting as well as for some burnt sienna raw umber in there too that I kind of played around with. And I kind of really like that effect there. This raw umber is a nice color. I'm going to start off in the same manner, wetting the foreground. And I'm going to do some like different textural effects. I think I'm going to use some salt or else I am going to like sprinkle with my fingers some water onto the foreground here to get some cool effects. Some like shrubs there. A 
we're going to have some areas where things are going to be darker. I'm sort of like squinting, like when you squint at the reference photo and see where things should be placed. And then you got all these reeds and foliage coming up here. I'm painting in the direction those are growing. Just very muted. Pick up some of that raw ombers. Okay, and going over top some of that stuff. Kind of wanted that overlap a little bit. It's more kind of a reddish brown in the foreground here. Coming in with my burnt sienna and my raw umber colors just kind of tapping things in here if i squint at my reference photo the darkest thing is actually the foreground probably gonna look like i wrecked this whole thing but things are drying I do want to get more of these colors in here. Kind of think it'd be interesting if some little blooms uh, form here too, because I was going to splash water on it anyways, which is going to make blooms. Getting a little texture in there, guys. And I'm also going to be doing some scraping. Because there are so many. And this is the perfect time because when we scrape in, we're getting those white, lighter areas. So I'm loving this. This is going to add a lot more interest. And also just really help bring those colors together, all the colors. And for some good measure, we can do a teeny bit, very sparingly. So I can actually take a dry brush and get rid of some of that salt now because I don't want to take off too much paint. I don't want there to be like a big splotch there, you know what I'm saying? So kind of spreading those around. So I'm not going to hasten the drying time because the salt effect won't happen. Okay guys, I'm back. And as you can see, I'm glad I took off some of the salt because I just have a very soft effect in a couple of spots. you guys are all having a lovely day and if you guys have gotten value so far out of this video and 
like my artwork, then if you can please hit that like button. Much appreciate it. Helps me out with the YouTube logarithm and subscribe to my channel. Much appreciated. Now I want a really dark purpley brown for these stalks. These foreground ones kind of have this purpley color, I find. So I think it would be a lot more interesting to vary these colors. So yeah, these make <laughs> really nice thin lines, guys. I'm liking these little brushes so far. This is my first time using them. Now we want some that are bent and some straight. This part, because of all the detail, this will take the longest. So just try to have fun with it. And if you feel like you have too much control, like you want to have loose hand, so I'm trying to hold it up here and not be such a scaredy cat. Um, there are some really nicely bent ones some one that crosses right in front of the sun and you can't see the whole thing it's kind of a neat effect if i feel like i'm being too tight i'm trying to go back up to holding it farther up here And the same thing with some of these bent ones also, not just in the sky, but in the grass here. So trying to get some curved lines in here as well. So trying to get a little bit more of uh, the darker ones in the foreground. Kind of liking how that looks though. So just a fun, cute, fast little project. You could do more or less. It's up to you. I, I, think, I think this is good. I don't want to overwork it either. So once you're done, sign your painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and give it a try. Let me know what you think in the comments below. See you guys next week.